topic is um it's something a bit tricky i've got a lot of requests wanting us to discuss this topic over and over and over and i felt okay i mean september is pcos month and now so let's just get straight to it pcos is a short form for polycystic ovarian syndrome pcos polycystic ovarian syndrome and then it being a syndrome means one thing it means the symptoms you have is not limited to only one part of the body so pcos symptoms is not only limited to, to the womb it, it's everywhere it could be everywhere I mean, but this is pcos but, so what, what is pcos itself pcos is when an ovary produces too many follicles at a time you get the ovary produces too many follicles at a time and then look at it from this angle when there are so many follicles produced by the ovary the ovary sends a message to the brain to say that oh, don't give us any more fsh fsh is the hormone that makes the the um, ovary produce follicles you get it's called follicle stimulating hormone so fsh is that hormone so it sends a message to the brain say don't give us any more fsh we are okay because of course there are too many follicles and then when there are so many follicles they tend to obstruct themselves so there is no ovulation because they are tightly packed imagine four people trying to move through a door as a matter of fact you need to know that you get is ovulation first before your period your ovulation is what causes you to see your period so people that don't ovulate will not see their period the commonest presentation of pcos is uh, irregular periods so if you're this lady and then you know that since you started your period it's not been regular it's been one thing or the other like so people can literally track their period so people can literally say my period is coming tomorrow and that tomorrow will be tomorrow but some people when they say tomorrow they still have to wait for like maybe like another one week or a few more days before they can actually have that period you should have start thinking something might be wrong if you fall into that category another thing that can because PCOS, you know, is ladies that start their period very early. We call it early menarche. So if you start your period at about 9, 10, then you are at the risk of PCOS. Then apart from that, when a lady has prepubertal obesity, what does that mean? It means that lady is big. She's on the obese side before she started her period. So that's why it's dangerous to have kids who are obese. It's dangerous to have kids who are obese because you are just subjecting those children to a lot of other problems. But also people who have diabetes as they are one of their family know, hereditary problems, they are also prone to, uh, to obesity, uh, to PCOS. You know? So, I mean, it's all falls in a spectrum. That's why it's, it's a syndrome. So, now that we know what PCOS is, now that we know what some causative factors are, also, PCOS can be hereditary. In fact, twins twins can have PCOS if they are identical. Exactly. Like Tai and Kenyide, both female and both identical. They can both have PCOS. Also, when, when the mother has PCOS, the children is li are likely to have PCOS. And another thing, PCOS does not mean you cannot have children. PCOS only makes it a bit more difficult to, um, it makes it a bit more difficult for you to conceive. It does not stop your chances of having children. Because I've heard a lot of people saying, Oh, doctor, they say with this PCOS, I can't have children. With this PCOS, I can't this. This PCOS, I can't that. Nah, with PCOS, you can still have children. Just a bit more challenging. How do we diagnose PCOS? How do we diagnose it? It's important to diagnose PCOS. But let me tell you one thing. There, there are some criteria we use. And trust me, out of three criteria, if you meet two out of three criteria, then we can say that that person has PCOS. Let me take you back a bit. PCOS can also be described as uh, when somebody has an overgrowth of male hormones, of androgens. That's why if you look at some PCOS patients, they have a lot of acne and also they have some hirsutism, that's some male pattern hair growth. Those, those male pattern hair growth in the case of increased androgen or some male hormones two if you have irregular periods then three if you do a transvaginal scan which is the 
major scan that is done to diagnose PCOS is that scan is called the transvaginal scan. If you do a transvaginal scan and then it shows multiple, multiple uh, follicles, then you can say that this person has PCOS. Of course, there are other there are other things that can cause you not to see your period. Because I mean, I don't want you not to see your period and start thinking PCOS. No, there are other things that can cause you not to see your period. However, so we say PCOS is a diagnosis of exclusion. So making a diagnosis, you have to exclude other facts like pregnancy, use of medication, and some other things. Then you can now make a conclusion that this person has. As for this criteria, meeting two. So sometimes you might go to the hospital and the doctor says, sees you that you have a suitism. I say, oh, what's the problem? I say, oh, doctor, my period is not coming well. And the doctor looks at your face and see her suitism or see acne. The doctor might not even need to do a scan. Might not even need to do any blood test to know that this person has. PCOS. Having said that, I'm sure you're interested in what is the solution? What am I meant to do if I have PCOS? So for people who have been confirmed to have PCOS, there are some things you can do to yourself by yourself. First thing, if you are obese, you might need to lose some weight. In fact, we recommend that people should lose at least 5 to 10% of their weight. And if you agree with me, most people who have a family history of diabetes, as I said, they are prone to PCOS. So these people are the ones that really, really need to do this exercise. So if there's a family history of diabetes, the doctor might be having the back of your mind, my mind that, okay, this person might have um, diabetes and they're putting your symptoms together so that this person has PCOS. This person might, doctor might likely say, please start some weight loss journey. Apart from the weight loss journey, what else can be done? Eating healthy. Eating healthy meals for PCOS will include reduction of carbohydrates. You try to reduce carbohydrates as much as possible. If you're able to reduce carbohydrate to the barest minimum, reduce sugar intake to the barest minimum, trust me, you're, you're making a headway with your PCOS journey. You're making a headway. And then also, we always encourage that you stop smoking. Stop smoking. Because it's very important. It's very important to note all the, the last note I want to say that. Uh, live healthy try and keep up with your exercises stay active and eat healthy love you all